Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of some gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I sought to borrow, from my book's secrease of sorrow, sorrow for my lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, "'tis some late-night visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. "'This it is, nothing more. "'Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. "'Sir,' said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, "'but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you, when I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before, but the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore, this I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore, merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all of my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, and somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely this is something, at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thread is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still, a moment, and this mystery explore. "'Tis the wind, and nothing more. "'Open here I flung the shutter, "'when with many a flirt and flutter "'in there stepped a stately raven "'of the saintly days of yore. "'Not the least obedience made he, "'not a minute stopped or stayed he, "'but with mane of lord or lady "'perched above my chamber door, "'perched upon a bust of palace "'just above my chamber door, "'perched and sat, and nothing more.' Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorn of the countenance it wore, though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me why thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear disclosure so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast the sculpted bust above his chamber door with such a name as Nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only, that one word, as if his soul in that one word did outpour, nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is only shock in store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of nevermore. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, 
to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated over. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating over, she shall press, ah, never more. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee, respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet, still, if bird or devil, whether tempest sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there a balm of Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by the heaven that bends above us, by the God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden if, within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels named Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting, Get thy beak into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of my palace, just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. What's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed that poem. It's by Edgar Allan Poe. It was written in 1845, and it's called The Raven. Horror back in those days was a little bit different, and the English language was a little bit different back then as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll put a link to a place where you can actually read it along with the commentary, and maybe it'll be a little bit easier to understand for you. But uh, I've always loved Poe. I've always loved writing, and this definitely had a lot to do with me seeing a telltale heart and uh, also this poem itself in an episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> the Simpsons was one of my favorite shows growing up and I kind of wanted to use this as a springboard into my next series of commentaries. So I'll definitely be doing TV series commentaries and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too weird and you guys don't hate me now. But uh, if you missed my recent videos, check out my Battlefield Friday. It was awesome. I talked about the first time I got arrested. Got great responses on it. And uh, the Resident Evil 4 live commentary part 2 went up yesterday. So you can check out both parts of that. And if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. I love you forever. I love you a long time. And um, yeah, I will be back on Wednesday with another episode of MW on MW. And... Hope you guys have a great, safe Halloween. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.